Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz, Tribeca Trade Group, and today is Wednesday, July 14th. So lots of things to cover today in the market, uh, as well as a lot of events that we're getting through this uh, this week so far. It is Wednesday. We've already had a number of them. Risk disclaimer in front of you, everything that we're going through here is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. Everything that we're going through here is for education purposes only. If the screen is a little bit blurry, it is because YouTube has not rendered the video. Give it a little bit more time. So let's talk about a couple of those events, and then we'll talk about today's price action, which was kind of uh, which was kind of nasty. But we had Powell speak today, right? That is one of the events that um, we know coming into this week that might uh, jostle uh, the markets a little bit. Um, what, what was the word that I used in Sunday's macro video, which I actually sent out publicly, by the way, this weekend. Uh, but I mentioned, uh, oh, I, uh, I said that we might get some market hiccups this week. Well, I think you could kind of say that, that we've gotten a couple hiccups, maybe, a, maybe two or three hiccups this week. Um, but it just felt like it was in the cards. Whenever we have a ton of events on the horizon, uh, it seems to be that that's the case. So today we had PPI, which is another important gauge of inflation, coming in hot, 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 uh, as as the CPI did uh, yesterday. Um, what's what um, sticks out is this year over year number for PPI, seven point three percent. That is uh, that's decent. And, um, you know, this number came out at 8.30 this morning and it was kind of a little bit overshadowed a little bit because at the same time Powell released his, um, his opening remarks statement um, publicly uh, before the, um, you know, uh, testifying in front of Congress. And, you know, he made some comments today about they're slow, going to be slow moving with, you know, pumping the, the brakes on, um, on stimulus or tape, tapering is the word, right? You know, when are they going to start tapering? Um, he said that there will be ample time that the, they will signal to the market before that will actually start. But if you look at the, the market's reaction uh, and some of the things today, you could kind of see that the market is taking note. Um, he did one of the things that I listened to as well is that they're a little bit surprised at the level of how high inflation is, right? They've, they've talked about before that they've mentioned thing, you know, the big T word, the other T word besides tapering is transitory, right? They've, we've heard, well, the inflation's transitory, transitory, but, you know, it's higher than I think what they were expecting. And I think, you know, if you look at these survey estimates, um, both from this, from the CPI report yesterday and the PPI report, it's higher than expected. So, you know, if, and then if you dissect some of these re reports as we did yesterday and you know you heard that some of it could be transitory like the um, like the used car sales uh, you know and various jokes came accompanied with that about you know selling your your car from the 90s for record price you know, uh, without getting off track here I'm just joking around a little bit but um, you know so some of it I think you know I, I'm you know I'm just reading what everybody else is basically putting out there but um, some of which I agree some of which could be transitory we've certainly seen lumber prices lumber prices um, come all the way back in so but then there's other things that that are not right there's other things that that may um, change right permanently you know people are now paying um, you know are, are now paying people more than they were right that is one of the gauges of inflation is is wage increase right and once you bring up the level that you're paying uh, that you're paying workers that seldom goes down it's usually kind of a one way one way street when when that happens so um, you know putting this all together well you know what did the market do today? You know, what, what was the reaction in some of these things that inflation, these inflation gauges coming in higher than expected, that surprising the, um, you know, su surprising uh, the Fed a little bit with how hot the inflation numbers are. And the fact also that they're going to be, you know, they're, they're going to take their time with the tapering. Well, um, if we look at the numbers, right, you could see that there's a pretty decent rotation out of, you know, some of your, once again, some of your higher growth, um, growth at any cost, you know, it's things like, um, you know, like the ARC funds were down pretty decent. The ARC Innovate, and, <clears throat> excuse me, the ARC Innovation ETF was down 3.4%, right? So these are things that are, that are signaling to you that there's that 
Remember, it's the larger funds, it's the institutions that are going to make the call here, right? The little guy, like, you know, retail traders like myself, we're just along for the ride, right? We can make some observations um, and we can make adjustments, but it's really the, the big funds that are going to move in and out of names, right? And if you look at what you know, and today is just one day. It's not a trend, but you could see that there was some actions taken today, right? So um, that ARK Innovation ETF, which is a good proxy for, you know, super high growth was down 3.4%. You know, also there's a couple other ETFs that I started to talk about last week. I'm trying to remember if I did this for, um, if it was a member video or if it was a public video that I put out there regarding SPLV, right? Which is the low low volatile low um low volatility equities i know that's a mouthful um versus high beta equities right so you could see like today there was another one of these um deviations where you see low volatility name you know names doing quite well and that might be something that kind of goes on for a little bit you know that's more than one day um you this is splv right so Again, um, you know, what's in this thing? Well, what do you think? You know, you can make some guesses, right? So if you look at the if you look at the biggest holdings that's in here, Colgate Palmolive, Costco, Pepsi, Procter and Gamble. Why uh I don't oh there we go. Um, you know, so you have consumer staples, you have some utilities, you have some telecom in here, right? You have a little bit of um of you know, you've got some healthcare companies, maybe, you know, a little bit of things like Zoetis and Agilent medical device companies are in here um, waste management is in here right there's a couple names that I own um, that are in here because I just thought that that might be the way that this tape goes um, so you could see as a, as a group you know you can just trade the ETF rather than pick individual names you know or you could try to pick some of the um, you know picks you know some of the individual names for to, to outperform but you could see SPLV you know how to find a SPHB on the other hand, um, just like we talked about last week when it broke the 50-day moving average, has continued to have these light um, bounce days and then big red days. So we're not past the lows of last week, but this doesn't look like a really great looking trend. Also, if you want to look at that ARK ETF, which is even higher growth, uh, that broke the 200-day moving average. So, um, you know, that's not, that's not the best looking sign. Also, if you look at things like solar, which listen, I'm in a solar position. I put this back in the TTG trend portfolio about a, about a week and a half ago. You know, I might have to make a change here. I might have to take that out, um, considering that's back below the 200-day moving average. So um, yeah, so there's some things going on here. So we'll, we'll look at some more charts, but I, I, I wanted to come away with a couple messages as, as I always try to do in these videos. Um, you know, what's particularly difficult with this market, and I know everybody's talking about Apple, and, you know, Apple goes up 2.4% today and is the biggest, you know, is the biggest weighting in most indices. So it's kind of masking some of the weakness. But, you know, what's hard right now is most what I would normally do in this market when I thought that we were going to get you know, when I'm guessing that, um, you know, that there might be a little bit of overall volatility is I would probably buy like spy puts or something like that. Now, right now in this market, no way is that working. So that's not the right formula for this, for this market. This market is very different right now, right? <clears throat> there's some positive things going on and there's a whole bunch of negative things going on <laughs> because, and the reason why I say whole bunch is because, you know, we've talked about this now for weeks with the, um, with the bad market breath, right? So this bad market breath keeps weighing on this market and um and weighing on a lot of people right now you know in terms of you know the level of frustration um dow stocks today 15 versus 15 advancing versus declining um s p had more decliners um this was um early on in the day uh which is which is also a bit frustrating uh this morning the breath was you know we opened up pretty strong and it was a deterioration of um of breath as the day wore on so you had more declining names 260 versus 243 and then look at the nasdaq which again is is has a lot of small caps in here 2120 versus 775 Whew, that is some bad stuff going on look at the four week lows 
start to pick up too, right? So again, this is this is not like um, this is not what we want to see in terms of like you know looking under the hood and and seeing a strong market. We've got right now a deter deterioration going on in the market. IWM is something important to watch. You know, we've talked about how this has basically been sideways. It's still sideways, right? It's still, you know, um, technically it is below the fifth, back below the 50 day moving average, but it has not gone out of this channel. So, you know, that may happen. You know, the way that this, the fast moves that we're seeing to the downside, you know, tell me that, and the fact that we're below the 50 day moving average, I give a higher probability that we could break this. Now, 216.88 is a short term level that we could get down. Down to and that could be a possible bounce level but um, even if we bounce we are not seeing very strong bounces right here right now so something is gonna have to change a little bit um, because this is getting this is going from bad to worse over the last couple weeks in terms of market breath and so on and so forth so I want to talk about a couple a couple things you know now that we know and we've certainly have talked about breath getting weaker and weaker over the last couple of weeks. So so what do you do? You know, what have we talked about? Well, there's been three things that I've been talking about, right? Three three adjustments. And I have this in the spreadsheet. You also heard me talk about this in the publicly um, in the public video that I sent out on was it Saturday? I think Saturday and Sunday I sent it out. You know, and I said the same three adjustments, same three adjustments in a in a tough tape. Um, those are uh, holding uh, less amount of positions, right? Making sure, you know, really pruning down your positions, um, having smaller positions as well. So, you know, as the market moves a bit faster, some, some areas of the market definitely moving faster, keeping smaller positions. Um, and then avoiding short, and this is another one that I think is important because I know a lot of uh, traders, I know a lot of younger traders who trade a lot of short-term options, you know, avoiding short-term option risk right now, right? Remember with options, you've got to get two things right um, versus with stock, right? You've got to get the direction right and you have to get the timing right. You get either one of those wrongs, either one of those things wrong, you're going to have negative P&L. So, um, you know, we, I like to do a little bit more option trading when, um, when it's in a good environment, right? When, when, breath is expanding, right? More advancing names versus declining names, right? You're, you're, you're in an easier market environment. Right now, you're not in a very easy market environment. Um, the other thing too, just to be somewhat, you know, to put a positive spin at this, right? Because it is what it is, right? You look at all the names that went down today versus up. You know, this is not something that you and I can control um, in regards to um, you know, and I've given this example over and over, but there's just more names that are declining right now than advancing. Um, you can't control that. You can't control names going down like this. You know, specifically some of the more popular areas, which I know are growth areas of the market, right? Retail traders love to trade growth names. They don't like to trade low volatility names. I know that because whenever I put out a chart on Shopify or Roku, I get a whole bunch of likes and retweets. When I put out a chart of Cisco or Procter & Gamble or a utility company, nobody cares, right? <laughs> um, so, you know, it just is what it is. It's, it's a much tougher environment um, given that uh, retail traders love growth and they love small cap growth names. So we, so you can't control that. So, um, you know, what you can control is these three, these three things. Right. And I think that's important. You know, if you look at, you know, all these arguments about, um, you know, hedge funds have it rigged and, you know, all this bullshit that you hear on the tape all the time from people on Twitter about the markets rigged and, and hedge funds and this and that um, you do, you do have a, you do have an advantage over hedge funds and uh, big funds, right? Most of them have to stick to their mandate. They have to stick to being either, you know, fully invested or close to it. And, you know, they have to stick to whatever their fund. If they're a tech fund, they have to stick to tech. If they're a growth fund, they have to stick to tech, to, to growth. You can do whatever you like and you can sit this out and you can wait for your pitch, right? That's, I know that's, it's not an easy thing to do, but, you know, my philosophy is, um, my philosophy is that, um, you know, I, I do make a decent amount of money for the most part, when breath is expanding and when the trend looks pretty good, 
um, I know when you know I know to kind of press down on the, on the gas pedal in terms of risk taking. Um, when the market is doing this, I, I try as much as possible to kind of stay out of it. And if I could just kind of like, you know, even if I have a couple days where, where P&L is not perfect, where it's down a couple days or I'm flat, you know, I'm basically just, just treading water until I get better opportunities, right? So I will, you know, I continue to trade a little bit and try to put on some trades. But, you know, like legging, I talked about, you know, in a couple of trades today, like legging into trades, giving yourself plenty of room to add. You know, one of the mistakes that I see sometimes and and I'm guilty of this from time to time is is going going in too big on on your first attempt at a trade, right? You know something like that. Like today, I tried I tried going along the semis. You know I thought the semis would really see some good pin action from Apple, and you know basically the open was the high for them, right? So I made sure like I was like okay, let me start legging into a trade, you know, and I kind of added a couple times, and I'm leaving myself plenty of room. So I use the term legging into, just kind of beginning a trade. You know, you've seen me say that a lot of times in the trading room this week. Hey, I'm just starting a position, right? So I'm really trying to adhere to the to the adjustments that I mentioned this weekend. Now, again, I'm not perfect, right? And and everybody makes mistakes, and I've done that with a couple like weekly option trades this week. But it is what it is. I I always have to be comfortable with um with that type of risk if taking it. But um, uh, you know, so so these things are important. Right. Because at the end of the day, um, for me, like, you know, like I said, if I'm OK, just kind of treading water here a little bit while the market's not giving us, you know, some some really good, um, you know, if I want to use the baseball analogy, just not giving us good pitches. All right. So just keep being patient and, and, and you know, waiting you know, waiting for your pitch is an important concept in trading, right? So right now the market's not giving us good pitches, right? So you got to just keep keep taking the um, you know, the, the bad pitches, right? You ever get that bad pitcher when you're you know when you're young, where you're, where you're playing you know either like a wiffle ball or playing kickball, and they keep throwing the they keep trying to put spin on the ball, right? Those are ones you don't want to you don't want to swing, you don't want to kick at those, right? So that's what we have right here. So the more that you can kind of stay out out of it and it is the summertime too you could do things like go for a swim you could go for a bike ride in the winter time it's a little bit harder unless you're a skier but you know that's kind of the um the, you know the recipe for for success right now because it, it doesn't matter like how good of a trader you are in right um in terms of skill level you know one of the most important things that you could realize that this is just a not this is not a great environment, right? And you got to be able to kind of be flexible with it and realize that um, S&P hedges aren't going to work. What's going to work? Having a bigger cash position, right? That is the best hedge um, that, I, that I think. Again, so again, I'm giving you all my opinions. This, is, this video, again, is for, for information purposes only. I'm not telling anybody what to do, but I'm just telling you from what I know is when this market doesn't look good, um, even though the indices, are, you know, you look at the S and P, and you look at the Qs. Not so much IWM, and, and they look relatively fine. But there's a lot of damage going on, you know, underneath the hood. You know, especially when you see an Apple, which is the biggest weight, um, go up over two percent for the day. That's really masking some of the issues, right? What's the weight of um, what's the weight of Apple in the S and P? It is, I want to say, like a four or five. It's a six percent weight. You know, so it's a six percent weight. Microsoft is a five percent weight. In the queues, um, Apple is a. Da, 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 da. I don't know. This is not coming up. But um, what I will tell you as well. Whoops. Yeah, why don't I do it this way? What I will tell you as well is, you know, people have gotten negative against ETFs. Well, I'll tell you right now, if you're holding the Qs or if you're holding SPY, you're not you're not so negative right now, right? Because you know it's it's actually working pretty well to be holding SPY and B, and Q right now, right now in this environment. Yeah, Apple's uh, an eleven and a half percent weight right now in the queues, right? Everybody talks about that. Oh, passive is so bad and the, and holding the ETFs is so bad. You could do better, you know, trade, you know, holding single stocks. Really? Unless you're overweight Apple, um, you're probably having a tougher time right now. All right. Um, what else did I want to cover? So I wanted to cover a couple things that are 
Um, a couple setups that I think are interesting. Um, you know, also the bonds, by the way, are continuing to move higher. Just kind of tells you that um, I view that as kind of risk off right now, right? So they're oscillating back and forth. Right, so up up almost one percent for the day. All right, so we covered those technicals. You know, again, there's not really much to look at in the S and P. Right, uh, we're still holding. I mean, it does look like it's it may be rolling over a little bit here, but even so, even if we come down to here, it's just the twenty day moving average. So really, not that big of a deal. We're also still holding that top of value that I've been talking about, right, which is right around forty three fifty. And the Qs is, hold, you know, these, these things are holding their um, their support. You know, they're not even close, right? They've got a little bit more bumper room down to support. That's down at 361, all right? So that's not the issue, right? The issue is, um, you know, what's going on under the hood. All right, so, so a couple names. Again, boring names, right? But Cisco, I added a, posi a position in Cisco today. Right? I added... Um, yeah, I mentioned SMH did not work, but, you know, that's an ugly looking candle for SMH. But Taiwan Semiconductor reports today, I am expecting a decent report out of them. They will probably talk about, you know, short part shortages and so forth. But still, um, I would think it would be more positive. You know, demand is high. So we'll, we'll see what they say. Um, again, they report tonight, I believe, or going into tomorrow morning. Because uh, again, this TSM is an ADR. Um, Goldman, right? The, you know these bank earnings again. I, I don't, I don't play any of these bank names for earnings. Um, I don't do anything because they just don't move. The options are not expensive, so you can't really sell premium. Um, but you know they just don't really do much. Um, but Goldman here is kind of interesting, right? This was a name that I played. Uh, going into the end of last week, going into this week before earnings, you know, had a couple nice green candles. Notice the little consolidation in here. So I, I like this. Notice it's also, you know, the 50-day moving average is rising, right? It's just kind of coming in and testing. It was down slightly on the day. Um, it held support. Also note where this thing got to, right, which is this VPOC up here. So it's in here. Um, Procter and Gamble. So again, you know, I could go through like 10 of these charts of the low volatility names. I know you're probably not going to trade them, um, <laughs> but Procter and Gamble. Uh, the only thing I don't like is it took out this VPOC here, but the chart looks pretty good. Um, Costco continues to work well. Um, I've been getting some chart requests on Walmart. Walmart's in value. It's the only thing I don't like, right? So it's in the July value area. But Costco has been working nicely. Um, McDonald's is very close to breaking out. Although, again, another name that opened on the high and kind of sold off a bit. But that's what looks a bit more constructive to me. Um, you know, they were just talking about NVIDIA, which is kind of coming in a little bit. Right? It, this has support. Uh, but we'll have to kind of wait. You know, this was not a nice enough bounce off the low of the day. So we'll see if this draws in some buyers, right? It's basically where this thing got to last week too and held. So I would really watch that 790 level. Um, you know, a couple other names I think are just are just meant to be watched right now. Um, Shopify, again, notice how it's behaving, right? All over the value area, top of value rejection, bottom of value, um, still holding that for now. But we've been at this lower level, so I, I would be very um, mindful that you've got some support here, but watch out if it breaks it. 1455 is that level to watch in Shopify. So again, you, you know, bull flags are fine, but you don't want to see these things start to really break down below the, you know, the 20-day moving average, which, would, which also coincides with um, the level that I just mentioned. So you know, be, be mindful if that really changes. Um, Roku is another name too that, um, you know, right at the 20 day moving average again. So again, you know, has to basically stand, you know, has to be able to kind of hold in here, right? So we've not seen too much follow through this big move, big move in growth stocks. You know, normally, you know, what happens is consolidation and then they push higher. Now we did see that in some names, but um, there's a lot of names that are kind of caught in the middle. Right, CrowdStrike is another one too. 
This is another one where I've remained long. But again, it looks it's looking a bit iffy here. Down 2.6% today needs to hold here. We don't want to see this kind of come all the way back in um, to here. That would be, you know, a no-no. All right, so that's the story with um, with a lot of these names. You know, also, I, I was listening, this video is a little late because I was listening to the Kathy Wood interview on CNBC, you know, talking about um, what their mandate is, right? And, and um, you know, I thought it was kind of interesting. But, you know, again, this should also kind of give you a sense of how difficult this market is, right? I view her as a pretty, um, you know, smart, savvy person, even though they're in super high growth, right? That's their mandate. But um, I do view them as, you know, her, her and her team as very smart. Well, look at their, look at how their, their fund has performed this year, right? They're down two point, they're, they're down almost 2% year to date, right? That's, that's also should give you a sense of how difficult this market is right now, right? Look at the S&P is up 17%, right? So uh, again, we retail traders have an advantage. You don't have to stay and what does Jim Cramer call them? Woodstocks? You don't have to stay in Woodstocks, right? You could do whatever you like to do, right? That is the advantage that you have. You don't have to be in the market when it's volatile or when those stocks are selling off. You could pull your money out and wait for cheaper prices. So, you know, again, um, this market, the, you know, the, the final, um, the bottom line here is um, respect what price is telling you, even though the indices are still grinding, you know, and, and doing okay. And, um, you know, keep your head up here. You know, realize that we still have a lot of time left in this year. Do not get yourself in a bad place. And, um, you know, sometimes live to fight another day is, is, is the best thing that's, that, um, that you could do when the market really gets difficult. All right. So that's my message for today. Hang in there. And um, there will be a lot of opportunities to come. You just have to wait for, for a better environment. We've now been dealing with this bad market breath for, what, three, four weeks? So, you know, maybe we have to get through earnings too, right? You know, listen to some of how these, to some of these um, companies report earnings. We might find a whole other group of names to kind of go after, you know, that um, have earning gap ups. So this is really a time. It doesn't matter, you know, um, you know, what the market is currently doing, every time that we have earnings, it's more of a time to really be observing uh, what these companies are doing and which ones are going to emerge as leaders. Because you're going to find that some are going to emerge out of their earnings quarter as, you know, had really good price action and maybe a new leader in the market. So you got to stay fresh and you got to stay focused and, and um, pay attention to, you know, observing um, some of these trends that we're going to see, you know, in the next couple of weeks. Thanks for watching. Have a great night, everybody. See you tomorrow.